Yeah. 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 Welcome, with a warm welcome, we appreciate your applause, our master of ceremonies, Rob Civitanas! How you doing everybody? Good to see you guys. Like a Swiss watch we run this shit. Three weeks in and no fuck ups. Oops. Nah, nah. Glad you guys here with a great, uh, if any of you were tuned in to, to Strong Island, uh, Radio and TV earlier. We had a fantastic show before we came on. Uh, I got to find out that guy's name. He Dr. built it out. Show Dr. Shonuff. Dr. Shonuff. The Nuff. singer? That was the singer? Uh, that wasn't the singer, but that was the show. Dr. Shonuff. DJ Shonuff. DJ Shonuff. DJ Shonuff. I'm not drinking the wine. We'll check with me. Later I'm on. drinking we'll the wine. The, the show is Dr. Once again, again, this this venue holds between 1,500 and 2,000 people. We came in a little short, but these guys are here ready to laugh. <laughs> ready to have fun. <laughs> I want to uh, wait no longer to introduce a good friend of mine and executive producer of this very show, The Strong Island Comedy Showcase, Lori Fay. Lori oh. Fay, come on over, Lori. Come on. I'm the mic with you. Share the mic with me, okay? I love you. I love you, too. Thank you guys yeah. for coming tonight, the yeah. audience. Thank you so much for coming again. We're yes. having a great time doing this. Yes, we are. Well, you got me. I'm stuck. What the I fuck did you, you. do? I love you. I love you. Do you smell the mozzarella from the yeah. pizza yeah, I yeah, just yeah. had? Yeah, you gave her a back rope for three minutes. She's done. Oh, my God. It's completely She's done. She splashed. She splashed on the stage. Good. So um, you guys had a good show tonight. Plug your show. We did. Um, the Living Room Radio Show, Lori Faye and Christine McCauley. It was awesome. We had a great time. We love it. And uh, we're just happy to be able to do it. And yes, absolutely. Helping with, stay here with me. Stay here with me. Am I holding you up? This is good. You've got a lot of wine tonight. This is good. See, to make this part of the show work, we really have to feed Lori wine and force it down her throat because she just doesn't want any part of it. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's right. I don't want it. any more wine. So, my beautiful friends, see these? Mm. I know. We got a great group that keeps coming back, and we really, really appreciate it. It's wonderful. We we appreciate the support. And you know what? We got a, like a lineup tonight that's going to kick your ass. Got three very funny friends that are going to come out here and uh, make you guys laugh. See, Lori doesn't realize they all leave here. They get in a short bus, and they drive over to South Oaks. South Oaks, <laughs> South Oaks and their home, so... <laughs> It's, you know, it's going to be what it is, I guess. Um, I love that you guys come every week. If anybody out there is watching right now, share this. Post it. Post it on Facebook. Facebook Live. That's what we're about right now. Post it, post it, post it. Share it, share it, share it. We want this thing to take off. We want to be able to come here and fill this 2,000-seat venue. That's Eventually. the goal, bitches. It is, it is. Share. Oh, wow. I can smell the wine. <laughs> Not a turn on for me. But what are you going to do? Nah, that's okay. That's all right. You also smell like pizza. That is a turn on for me. It's pizza wine. Hey, pizza wine. Oh, my God. Pull the cheese out. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Soak the crust in it. Um, so what was your day like? It was a crazy day. My God. It was Wednesday. It was hump Wednesday. It was the dog. It was work. It was the show. It was. I ran seven miles this morning. It was nuts. I did an ab workout. And then I came to the show and I had another ab workout. It's a crazy life, but you know It's what? almost at the point where we're going to start a GoFundMe page because Lori is so worried about her shape. Listen, Look I at just, her. She's obviously I, in trouble. Wait a second. I just want to point out, because if you see me on, on Facebook in this goddamn shirt that Christine McCauley picked out for me, I look like I'm three months pregnant. But I want to be honest with you. I got abs under here. I got abs. So don't let this top fool you. You want to see me in this shirt without this jacket? I look 97 months fucking pregnant, okay? So... Let's You're going to be okay, kid. Trust me. You look fine. Thank you. I love you. I love you. I'm so excited for tonight. I think, uh, is Jessica Colazzo in the house? She's in the house. With the ukulele? I think ukulele I saw is. that. I got to be honest with you. I'm kind of excited. Okay, yeah. Me too. Me too. Oh, ukulele. Yeah, that's why I'm excited. <laughs> Once again, Lori Faye. Come on. Let's hear it for our executive producer. Oh, my God. So I hope you guys are having a good week. Um, I noticed something, I was reminded again this week that I'm losing the ability at my age to um, be able to tell the age of anybody younger than me at all. I can't say, well, he's not mentally, Dan. <laughs> seven, <laughs> seven, he says. No, I really, I just, we hit a certain, I don't know if this is true for women, too. I, you know, I mean, I just, I could be at an event, I'll see a good looking woman across the room, young woman, I'll be like, hmm. Uh, I'll buy her a drink or help her with a fucking homework on my show. <laughs> 
what's the move here? But I think moments come up in life that re remind us where we are, you know, our place. You ever, uh, you ever get caught singing in the car? Oh, yeah. Right, we're in this little dome we think where nobody can see or hear anything. I'm at a red light, beautiful day, windows down, I'm sitting there, you know, and I uh, got no idea the car next to me is full of beautiful young women. I'm just, I'm just rocking with the radio, you know. The record shows I took the blows. I'm happy. No, it's a thyroid thing. Where are you going, girls? They had uh, young women in the car. So I want to plug really quick Paradise Studios here in Massapequa. If you've got something that you want to record, you've got a show you want to present to the public, this is the place to come. It really is great here. We're uh, privileged to be able to run our show here. I uh, did another rehab show this past weekend. I'd like to do comedy for the, for the kids and, uh, and rehab and detox for the kids and the adults and everybody. And, uh, Oof. Yeah, it was a packed house this week, and they were there. I got there early, and uh, <laughs> this one guy was like, "You again?" <laughs> I felt bad. I was like, "Oh shit!" He goes, "I hope you got some new material, dude." I was like, "Oh man!" So you seen me before? He's like, "Yep." I said, "In rehab?" He's like, "Yeah." I was like, oh. "Well, I don't want to be too much of a dick, but which one of us here do you really think needs new material, buddy?" He laughed. He laughed. And then, you know, because you never know what the audience is going to be like this. Sometimes they laugh, sometimes they're like, hey. where's my Librium? Is what they want to know. Where's my Librium? There's pizza again. I want to see people eating the pizza. I bitch about this every week because I pay for the fucking thing. Don't laugh back there, comedians. You better start and eat some pizza too. About this, I do not kid. Um, so, do you guys ever get into the city and see a play? Go see like a Broadway show? Yeah. I know Lisa, you have, uh, Lisa, Linda, you have, Dan and Shirley, you can probably watch plays on the stick at home, I guess. <laughs> Whatever's on the fire stick, that's, what, that's about as cultured as you guys are going to get. I don't know, they're getting really lame, Broadway, they're just regurgitating old movies. It's, uh, what was the uh, uh, Groundhog Day, the musical? What in the fuck? <laughs> There's like one scene over and over and over and over, what the fuck? That's, how bad is this going to get, you know? DreamWorks presents Jaws the Musical. Matthew Broderick is Chief Brody. On my own, I know the shark will kill me without Quentin Hooper here to help me. I have a fear of water and of drowning. I am chief of police on an island. Yes, I know it makes no sense. The Kittner boy is never coming back. One minute floating on his raft, the next one he's a snack. My God, Quint is stuck in the Great White's throat. Farewell and adieu, I try to tell you we're gonna need a bigger boat. I've got to kill it. Come on, everybody. <laughs> I've got to find a way. Hey, I'll take a high-pressure oxygen tank and shove it in its mouth. As it swims back, I'll raise my rifle, take aim, eat the fucking pizza. <laughs> I paid for it. As it swims back toward me, I shall fire. Smile, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I killed it, I killed it on my own. Yeah, so if they ever really do that, you guys have my permission to shoot me in the fucking face. Oh, thanks, thanks guys. I'm very fortunate I get to do a lot of fundraising doing stand-up comedy. and uh, I've done a lot of fundraisers for the um, gay and lesbian community and uh, like when I do it here, like I see a couple of you ladies, not, not the straight ladies in the audience that, that I know of. I start singing that song, and women look at each other at, at, at the comedy club, like, oh, that's the melody from Les Mis. It's from Les Mis. And the guys are like, yeah, sharks and guns and shit, you know? And when I do the, the gay fundraisers, the men in the audience are like, that, that's from Les Mis. <laughs> and the women are like, yeah, sharks and guns and shit. 
It kind of works all around. I'm going to bring up my first friend that I brought with me tonight to make you guys laugh. You guys ready for this? Yeah. All right. This guy's a very funny guy. He's one of the nicest guys I've ever met in comedy. I don't get it. <laughs> he's a nice guy and he's funny. Make some noise for Mike Keegan. Let's hear it for Mike Keegan. Who the hell is the rest of you? Rob lost a lot of weight. He looks great. He's doing awesome. Happy to be here. Happy to be uh, we're here in Massapequa. I'm coming in from the city. I drove all the way here to Massapequa. Apparently, I don't know if you guys knew, Massapequa is an old Indian word which translates to 14 fucking hours on the LIE. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> but I'm, I'm here. I'm happy to be here. I'm happy just to be back in New York. I've been doing a lot of shows on the road lately. Last weekend, I was in Jersey. I was in uh, South New Jersey. I was in a town called Manahawk in New Jersey because I fucking made it in this business. <laughs> I, love, I love Jersey. I love working in Jersey. I love the people there. It just gets annoying because the whole time I'm in Jersey, I have to keep reassuring people uh, that I wasn't just their fucking governor. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, Governor Christie. Remember Governor Christie? Remember last year, 4th of July, Governor Christie closed down all the beaches in Jersey. Remember he did that? Had his own little private 4th of July party? That pissed me off because I love 4th of July. It's one of my favorite holidays. Tell you what I did last year for 4th of July, I went out to Coney Island for lunch, and I inadvertently came in third place in the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. It was, it was awesome. They handed me a trophy. I'm like, I'm just here to ride the fucking cyclone. I, uh, <laughs> I love 4th of July. I love 4th of July. I'm happy the warm weather's back. We're going to start barbecuing now. Uh, here's a little tip if you have a barbecue at your house. Uh, don't embarrass yourself. Uh, serve Heinz ketchup only if you have a barbecue. None of that Hunt's bullshit, right? If you serve Hunt's ketchup at a barbecue, that's just a subtle way of telling people you're going into foreclosure. It's <laughs> gar garbage ketchup. And this is where I rant about condiments for 20 minutes, so let's, let's strap in. Now, I, uh, now, like I said, I'm happy to be here. Uh, I've been on the road a lot lately. You learn a lot when you're on the road doing comedy. One of the biggest things I've learned uh, is no matter what size you are, no matter what kind of shape you might be in, if you want to feel good about your body, uh, go to a state fair in West Virginia. <laughs> That's right, I am the skinny guy at a state fair in West Virginia. Most times I'm the hottest chick. I, uh, <laughs> not, uh, <laughs> <very much. That's> right. <laughs> like about a year ago, I got invited to do a show at a state fair in West Virginia. I'm driving out there, driving out to West Virginia. I have these horrible directions that they emailed to me. One of the last things on the directions said, make a left after the Italian restaurant, right? So I'm driving. Hour and a half up and down this one main road they have in this town in West Virginia. I couldn't find the Italian restaurant. Finally called the venue. I said, can you at least give me the name of the Italian restaurant? Can't find it. Guy on the other end of the line in West Virginia goes, oh, you're looking for the Italian restaurant. It's called D Domino's. You're looking for Domino's. He meant fucking Domino's. <laughs> Domino <laughs> Domino's Pizza is the Italian restaurant in West Virginia. Hour and a half, I'm driving up and down the road. I pass the Domino's 14 times. I stop there to eat three times. I, uh, <laughs> finally, I finally get there. I get to the state fair. I had a little time to kill before the show started. I stopped at a booth that they had there, and what they sell at this booth is fried butter. Fried, but fried, but fried butter is a thing in West Virginia, right? I was trying to be a little bit healthy. I was just eating a regular stick of butter. You know, I'm, I'm, like, I'm like the pretentious guy from New York. I'm like, can I have my butter grilled? Is that okay? I don't know. Uh, there's these three gigantic guys. They're sitting around this booth, and they're just shoveling fried butter in their mouths. They didn't like me. They didn't like the skinny guy. Right? They didn't like me, right? <laughs> Right, I know. I hear, I hear a little comments that they're making each other. They didn't like me. They point at me. One of them points at me. He just goes, "Ah, well, would you look at Mr. Fitness over there?" Right. One of them points at me. He goes, "Who's he trying to impress, eating all them vegetables?" I was eating a corn dog. Yeah. It's uh, West Virginia vegetables. I am. Uh, I'm recently single. Congratulations, ladies. I'm back. This is this is all yours tonight. Thank you, sir. Also, I. Uh, <laughs> I'm recently. My ex-girlfriend and I were together for eight years. We're together for almost a decade. Right. And uh, everyone else that we're going to get married, we, we had a cool relationship. We had one of those hall pass agreements. I don't know if you know what that is if you saw the movie. Each one of us picked a celebrity. If either one of us ever meet that celebrity, we could sleep with that celebrity. No repercussions, no questions asked, right? So she picked Ryan Reynolds because she has a type. Um, <laughs> I picked Rachel Ray. I picked Rachel Ray because I know I'm never more than 30 minutes away from a delicious meal. I've seen the television program. I know how it works. That's fucking logic. But... Uh, no, it's cool. It's cool. I'm dating now, so dating's pretty cool. Um, well, you know, it's a, it's a lot different getting thrown out because I didn't haven't dated for a while. We were together for a long time, so now I'm doing the online dating like everyone else. I'm doing online dating, and it's all new and exciting to me. It wasn't around ten years ago when I started dating Max, so it's all new and exciting. I got excited. I joined all the sites. I joined Tinder, Match, eHarmony, BlackPeopleMeet.com. 
<laughs> black people, black, I, I go, they don't check, right? <laughs> I show up to the date, the girl goes, you're not black. I'm like, well, you're not fucking petite. We both lied to each other. <laughs> and so, <laughs> we're going to start the relationship. No, online dating is cool. Like, if, if, there's so many different categories now. There's ne- so many different, like, there were only a few of them years ago. Now there's just categories for everybody, no matter what you are. I swear to God, they have a dating site just for people with STDs. I swear, it's a real thing. I swear to God, you don't believe me, go home, Google it, Google it, and then clear your browsing history. <laughs> then dip your phone in bleach and throw it in a river. But, uh, but I swear to God, it's a real thing. It's a, it's a, posit- it's a dating site just for s- single people, uh, just for people with uh, STDs. It's called Positive Singles. Positive Singles is the name of it. It's a real thing. And <laughs> that's, that's the name of it. It's real. My buddy Matt was over at my house the other day, and uh, he fell asleep, left his phone out. I signed him up for it. <laughs> yeah. Signed old Matt up for it. Matt woke up the next morning. He looks at his phone. He's got all these messages. He's like, positive singles. What the hell is this? I go, oh, it's just a dating site for single people who are very optimistic. <laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> he loved it. He was doing great. He was meeting girls all the time, going on dates. Uh, Matt died two weeks ago. But uh, <laughs> it was never a Matt. He's not a real person. But... <laughs> But no, it's cool. So dating's all right. And uh, I, I, I meet girls at weddings now sometimes. I went to a wedding. Uh, I went, a couple weeks ago, I went to my first lesbian wedding. Never went to a lesbian wedding before. Uh, it was one of, my, one of my good friends that I grew up with. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been to one before. But it was beautiful. It was like any other wedding I've ever been to. The ceremony was beautiful. The reception was beautiful. The softball game was very competitive. <laughs> it was awesome. We had fun. <laughs> it was awesome. I went two for three. Uh, I went two for three. And uh, <laughs> this haircut, I got four phone numbers. <laughs> so... Everyone's like, what the fuck is Chaz Bono doing on third base over there? But, <laughs> good time. Another thing I did now that I'm single, I, uh, I, uh, I, I, started, I, went, I joined a gym now that I'm dating again. I joined a gym. I joined Planet Fitness. Planet, Fit- Planet Fitness is awesome because it's only $10 a month, uh, so I never really ever have to go. <laughs> never feel obligated. Anybody, anybody go to Planet Fitness? Any of you guys go to Planet Fitness? You go to Planet Fitness? You know, I'll, I'll tell you when I go. I go the first Monday of every month is when I go. That, that's Tuesday. Pizza night, Monday. Monday is pizza night. I'm never early, up early enough for the bagels. Monday night is pizza night. They have fucking pizza night at the gym. It's a real thing. I go. It's awesome because it's only $10 a month to go there. I eat $30 worth of pizza. I'm making $20 a month going to Planet Fitness. It's fucking awesome. But uh, and I, I, I go to the gym. I'll go to the gym and I'll, I'll go there for an hour and a half. I won't even use a machine. I'll just peer into the women's locker room and sniff the stationary bicycle seats. It's a it's a judgment free zone. You're not allowed to judge the things I do there. It's uh, but no, it's uh, so yeah, dating is cool though. Like uh, I uh, I don't know, what what else about dating? Fuck dating. It sucks. But <laughs> I I do I do Weight Watchers now though, because I have been I have been losing weight the past six weeks. I lost thirty five pounds in the last six weeks. And oh, thank you very much. You guys are awesome. Uh, it's not easy. It's difficult. Always comes a time when you realize you got to do something. I got very inspired one day. I was watching TV, and I saw these big beautiful breasts on TV. And then I realized, oh shit, that's not even turned on. This is my reflection. So I, <laughs> so I joined. Uh, I joined Weight Watchers. That's what I do now. I joined Weight Watchers. I'm a Weight Watchers guy. If you don't know what Weight Watchers is, it's uh, every Tuesday night, me and 17 middle-aged women in a basement in Bethpage, and uh, we sit around a table and we cry. We cry. <laughs> we cry. We cry, and then we get on a scale and hope we lost water weight. That's that's what we do. <laughs> But it's cool. The meetings are all right. Have you ever been to like one of these Weight Watchers meetings or one of these weight loss things? Always very pretentious people. The, the ladies that run it, they're always very pretentious. They always say the same sentence whenever you join one of these weight loss clinics. They always say the same thing. They always say, this is not a diet. It's a lifestyle change. I'm like, get over yourself. I'm eating broccoli instead of bacon now. I'm not out blowing guys on the Jersey Turnpike. Like, that's a lifestyle change. <laughs> but uh, no. Uh, if you've ever been to the, the Weight Watchers, there's always one skinny bitch in the meeting that doesn't belong there. It's me and the rest of the girls. There's always one skinny bitch that walks in and she says, oh, I don't like what I see when I look in the mirror. I feel like I have to lose five to seven pounds. I'm like, bitch, I lose five to seven pounds after morning coffee. I, <laughs> but, you know, me and the rest of the girls, we'll, we'll be happy for her. She'll lose a couple of pounds and we'll cheer for her. And, you know, me and the rest of the girls are talking shit about her after the meeting when we, when we all go out for ice cream. I, uh, <laughs> now we have a, but no, we, uh, the, the meetings are right though. Like, if you notice, there's always one, the, the weight loss meetings, there's, a, uh, there's always a leader there and she gives you tips on how to avoid overeating, how to lose weight. Last meeting we had, one of the tips she gave us, she said to avoid overeating, if you have a party at your house, instead of keeping all the leftover food around, just throw it out. Throw the leftovers out, this way you're not tempted to pick at it and eat it overnight, which is a good tip, it makes sense. Then she took it one step further, made it a little bit insulting. She said, after you throw the food out, pour bleach over it so you're not tempted to eat it out of the garbage. <laughs> You monsters. <laughs> That's how you keep raccoons out of the garbage. 
but it's a good tip. I tried it. I had a party in my house. I threw all the leftover food out, poured bleach over it. An hour and a half later, I catch myself Googling how much bleach a human being can ingest before they die. It's three and a half ounces. Guys, thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of the show. It's a lot of fun. You guys are great. Come back, Rob. Thank you very much, buddy. Keep it going for Mike Keegan. Come on, keep it going with this guy. So who is it that said yes to go to that gym? Dan? <laughs> okay. You, I, yeah, I know. I, I know, yeah. Well, I've been going again, finally. I'm down almost 80 pounds from my bariatric surgery. As I keep saying, insurance wouldn't cover me going back on the Coke, so I went with the surgery. So I go to the gym, and you're not really supposed to, like, stare anybody down at the gym. You're not supposed to, you know. Um, I'm doing the elliptical machine now. I'm going 30 minutes on there. And, you know, there's a, woman, there's a woman on the machine next to me. And I know she could see me out of the corner of her eye. I'm like, <laughs> look at those things bounce. <laughs> and out of the corner of her eye, she's looking at me going, look at all that fucking shit bounce. <laughs> so I'll keep going. I'll keep, oh, good. Eat the pizza. Yes. Very good. You listened. Whoever just came in, eat the pizza. Liz, go eat the pizza. I only know a couple of people out of the 300 that are here by name, so you guys can't really see that. So I sent them over for the pizza. You guys ready for my next funny friend? All right. This guy plays the Governor's Clubs. He plays everywhere up and down the East Coast. Makes some noise for Ryan Brooke. Let me hear it for him. Thank you so much. I have, uh, what happened? I have not played the East Coast. That's a lie. Um, I have played on the East Coast. That's true. Not up and down it. Uh, what's that? Nova Scotia? Yeah, no, I haven't gone up that far or past um, a bridge. So uh, that's as far as I've gotten. What's going on? Hi. I'm a, I'm a married fella. Uh, I just celebrated 13 years of marriage uh, last month. Thank you. You don't know how it's going. Why are you clapping? It's just not, it's not going well. This is what you're clapping. She beats me. And you're clapping for this? <laughs> I'm kidding. It's actually it's going great. Uh, I love my wife. She's, she's great. Um, very happily married. I love her very much. Always nice for a guy to say that, right? It's always sweet. Easy for me to say because I'm married above my head. My wife is more attractive than I deserve. She's smarter than I am. She's just a nicer person. Like, you know, if she ever leaves me, my response is going to be, uh, well, thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate your patience here in this situation, your dedication to your commitment. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, I hope that uh, I hope we die around the same time. I do. Uh, that's something I, I hope happens. Preferably, yeah. when, preferably when we're older, because it's romantic, you know. Sometimes you'll see like an elderly couple, like one of them dies. Sometimes, you know, two weeks later, the other one dies, and everyone's always like, "Oh my God, they died of a broken heart." Yeah, I have a grandmother who's been living without my grandfather for 12 years now, and <laughs> sometimes when I ask her, like, "Did you even love him?" Uh, <laughs> show this man some respect and drop dead. Uh, <laughs> I still, uh, I still say stupid things to my wife, even though I know the position I'm in. Uh, uh, the other day, she's like, uh, Ryan, I lost 10 pounds. You didn't say anything. I said, well, I didn't say anything when you gained it either. So uh, are we square? No, we're not. OK, great. <laughs> not a jealous couple. We're not very jealous, my wife and I, which is nice. Um, I'm like one of those ignorance is bliss type of guy. Like, I don't want to know. You know, don't, just don't tell me. Don't let me find out. Like, that's why if I'm coming home unannounced, I always call first. I don't ever just pop in. I'm just, I always call. <laughs> hey, honey, uh, I'll be home in about 15 minutes. So uh, whatever you're doing, um, maybe now's a good time to start wrapping it up. Uh, if you need me to circle the block a few times, uh, I can do that. I'll go grocery shopping right now, I swear to God. You just let me know when I can come home. Um, I don't want to ruin a good time. I know I'm not really laying the pipe like I used to, and you got to get it somewhere. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, we don't have kids, my wife and I. Uh, no kids. No interest in kids. Um, people, <laughs> thank you. Do you have children of your own? You have you have a child, sir? No, I'm not. No, you're not. A, you're not. What? You were never born? What's happening? What are you... <laughs> why are you drunk? And, uh... Headshot. 
spot. Um, yeah, I don't have kids. My friends, they, they keep telling me to have kids. Like, Ryan, you gotta have kids. You can't imagine the love that you can feel for your own child. I'm like, you tell me that, and then I see you with your kids, and your stories don't match up. Uh, <laughs> it does not, it looks a lot like you hate your children, uh, from where I stand. If I could, I would have negative children. Um, <laughs> Save the planet a little bit, but I think that's called murder. Uh, I think <laughs> I'm not a <laughs> I, uh, I also uh, am losing weight. I'm more successful than the last guys, I guess. Uh, does that mean um, accurate? Uh, I just I just lost 60 pounds uh, recently. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. These are all new clothes. Um, what? What's her name? What does that mean? I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> you're, on the, you're on next week, buddy. <laughs> you're booked. Um, yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't exercise. I just dieted because that's easier to me. Like, I tried. I joined the gym. Um, I just, you know, I didn't go ever. Uh, it was a New York, it's a New York sports club. And uh, I can only go to the one location because I don't know if it, like when you know when you join there you know it's like I just I'm like I just want the cheapest membership you have. And the guy's like, "Are right, you gonna gonna come to this one location, right?" I'm like, "Yeah, probably not even this one." So uh, <laughs> just <laughs> I'll give you ten dollars. You can give me a fake keychain that doesn't work, and then you'll never see me again. Um, <laughs> I noticed when I was joining, they were giving out free T-shirts to new members, and the the T-shirts went all the way up to triple XL. I'm like, that's not, that's not good. Uh, that's bad advertising. You want, I don't want fat people walking around with your logo on their shirt. Like, <laughs> give them a large and make them work for it. You know, like, let them, like, if you fit into this, you can advertise for us. If you're gonna give out triple XLs, let, you know, put extra information on it. Be like, you know, New York Sports Club, uh, beginner. Um, <laughs> so, you know. Could we get more overhead in this shot? I don't know I could fit, I could stand on my own head and still all be in the shot. Um, oh, okay, that's better. <laughs> Oh, you want to get the advertising? I see what you want. You want the advertising. I respect that. So, uh, you know what I did? I, was gonna, I tried running. You know, like I was like, I, you know, I'm not going to the gym. I'll try running. Uh, you can't just start running when you're, you're a fat guy. You can't just like run out of the house like you're an athlete all of a sudden. You have to work your way up to some <laughs> brisk, brisk walks, you know, get your heart going. Because uh, I started running and I wasn't at the bottom of my driveway before. I was like, I need to stop running soon. Uh, <laughs> Because I am uh, running out of breath, uh, and I have cramps, and I still have Wi-Fi. So that's not a great <laughs> thing to have. I am still not sh using my data for my music streaming. That's the joke. <laughs> I, uh, but like, I couldn't just stop running, because like, when I started running, I saw my neighbor, and he, like, he waved, and I gave a wave back. And like, I, you can't just run back in the house. That's pathetic looking like <laughs> I'm, in all my, you know, I'm in my, my gear. you know. So he's just like, oh yeah, I'll just run back in that. You know, I gotta pick up some sticks by the bottom of the driveway and run back in the yard like I was in a hurry to clean up the, tidy up the street. So I'm like, my new goal, I'm like, I just need to make it around the corner. I just need to survive enough to get around the corner and then I'll just be, go around the bushes where he can't see me and I'll just lay down for a half hour. <laughs> and then I'll come running back like I did something. You know, like, yeah, no, it was a good one. That was, a, I felt that one, that was good. You got a lot of grass on your back. Um, <laughs> Recently, did one of the fattest things I've ever done in my life. Um, is uh, I was having a hard time locating a particular flavor of Haagen Dazs I like a lot. So I went on Haagen Dazs.com um, to try to find some information. Pleased to find out they have what they call a flavor finder, where you put your zip code in and the flavor you're looking for, and they let you know a store that's recently received the delivery of your flavor. So, yeah, you're welcome. I see your face. Uh, yeah. So I put it in, they tell me my local King Cohen has it. I'm like, I was just there. So this thing's obviously broken, but you know what? I'll go back. Uh, I'm not above it. So, you know, I put my shoes on, you know, take my shoes off, put my pants on, uh, put my shoes back on because I was so excited. I forgot to put my pants on. I was about to walk out the door in my underwear. Uh, got there, I look in the freezer, nothing. I'm like, and now I'm like, I'm dedicated. So I'm in the freezer, like I've restacked every pint. I'm looking to make sure it's not behind a butter pecan, perhaps, because the stock boys, they don't care. Um, not like I do. So <laughs> I put everything back in the freezer, and uh, I'm like, I can't just give up. I've, got, I've come so far. Uh, so I obviously have to go to customer service and ask if, you know, I don't know if you guys have any idea how embarrassing it is to look another human being in the face and be like, uh, yeah, uh, you don't have any white chocolate raspberry truffle in your freezer, 
but um, I was on Hagendaz.com, and uh, they said that you've got. <laughs> Turns out they did. Uh, it was just in the back. They had not yet put it on the floor. So I was like, "Well, don't put it on the floor. Just, just give me the case, and I'll go home with the case of it. Just ring me up for eight of them, and we'll do this uh, every week." Um, I, I eat a pint a night. Uh, I do. Well, not now because you know, I'm losing weight. But when I'm not, I just I just eat ice cream continuously. I'm at the point I just when I open the pint, the top goes right in the garbage because I'm like, that's never gonna go on p back on top of that. <laughs> you lie to yourself for years. You know, like you put it down the counter. And I'm like, you know, I'll eat half and then I'll put the thing back on and then that, and then that you just end up throwing all in the garbage and you go, I've I've can't control myself. <laughs> I uh, yeah, I also uh. Recently, <laughs> this is also very fat. Uh, decided I had enough, and I called up the good people over at Entenmann's and uh, told them that their black and white cooking machine needs to be recalibrated <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I'm getting a lot of black on these cookies. Uh, it's thin white and a lot of black. It's not a racial issue. It's just like I want what you're selling. You tell me black and white. I imagine 50/50. None of this 70/30 bullshit you're selling. So. <laughs> and the woman's on the phone. She goes, okay, sir, uh, I can transfer you to customer service uh, if you'd like. I'm like, I feel like I'm looking for maintenance. Um, somebody with uh, a tool belt to get something done around there. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm not suing uh, I'm not <laughs> I don't know why I'm not. They're, I, don't, I want them to work with me. I don't want to sue them. <laughs> then they shut down, and then I have no cookies. Uh, yeah, right? Imagine a world without crumb cake. Oof. You can't tell me this deli bullshit. This thick, this much crumb cake? I love crumb cake as much as this guy. I don't need this much of it. That was a rant I did not expect to go on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this, is not, this is not my day job. Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm here, so why would I um, do this? Uh, but I drive a truck during the day. I have a truck, uh, yeah. I don't know if you guys know this. All the truck drivers, they wave at each other when they pass each other on the road. I don't know why they do this. You're like, hi. I'm like, I don't know. We have nothing in common. I know <laughs> runners do it. Bikers do it. They have something. What they're seeing is the thing they have in common. We have nothing in common. Like, what do we have in common? We both myth missed career day. That's the only thing. <laughs> hi, I'm also on meth. Um, <laughs> But I see things on the road that drive me nuts. Uh, <laughs> the other day I was behind a car that had a bumper sticker that said, uh, relax, smile, God is in control. So I smashed into the back of him. Um, we both got out. The woman was like, what the heck? I'm like, I know, right? Why would God do that? <laughs> that joke uh, is better than that. Um, <laughs> but I, uh, a lot of people say, uh, they don't know if you're born gay, right? Uh, for that's uh, learned behavior. That's, uh, I think you're born gay, because I just went to go visit my cousin in the hospital. Uh, she gave birth to a little baby boy, and uh, I looked in the bassinet, and he was laying there, and he was all like, wah, wah. So <laughs> I think he was born gay. All right, you guys have been a delight. Uh, let's bring Rob back up. And enjoy the rest of your show. Thank you so much. One more time for Ryan Brooke. Come on, keep it going for him. Funny man, you guys having fun? Yeah. yeah, I almost got in a fist fight earlier today. <laughs> My age, it's just fucking stupid. You know, it's over words. You know, and when I was in my twenties, and somebody goes, "Come on, let's go." You're like, "All right, let's do this. Let's go now. Come on, let's go." And today, me and this guy, and it's been building. All of a sudden, he's like, "All right, fuck it, let's go." And I was like. You know what, I would, but I'm in between insurance coverage right now. <laughs> Lower back. It's, the street's wet over there. I, I forfeit, you fucking win. It's like that. You're in. You ready for my third funny friend? Yeah. All right, this woman works at the Governor's Clubs. I've worked, worked with her for years. We went through the trenches together in this business. Now, not fancy places like this. We were in row. We were really did a lot of shitholes together and came out of it better people for it. Make some noise for Jessica Colazzo! All right. Hey, guys. Cool. Uh, definitely not going to be able to do Purple Rain. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to do all songs tonight. 
which I've never done before, so it's kind of a treat for you guys. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> actually, I'm hoping I don't fuck anything up, but here we go. So this first song is about my child. Okay, here it is. All you ever say is meow. <laughs> and sometimes you purr. I rescued you from the pound. Now my clothes are covered in your fur. And my face and my food and my life. <laughs> you scratch the shit out of my couch. And knocked over my beer. My house smells like cat piss now. But I know I still need you here. <laughs> they say I'm crazy because I call my cat my son. They call me a cat lady, but fuck them, I only have one. You walk all over my table. And when you pass by, you like to show me your asshole. <laughs> now I know I can't finish my pie. You spray like crazy, even though your balls are gone. But you are still my baby. I'm so glad you're the only one. I have loved you for many years. Maybe one cat isn't enough. You made me realize my deepest fears. Now having seven kitties is tough. They say I'm crazy Cause they don't know that cats can be fun I guess I'm a cat lady Cause now you're not the only one Meow 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 why do they always try to run? Meow! Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some cat people in the crowd. Huh? How many cats do you guys have? Two. Two? Five? Oh. All right. <laughs> Goddamn right. <laughs> no mice and no rats. You know. That's the whole reason why cats became our friends. They totally domesticated themselves. Did you know that? Because people, when they started working on farms, they uh, they were, you know, you know, uh, growing grain and shit. And the mice came, and the cats were like, uh, "We're gonna eat the mice." And the people were like, "All right, we're cool." So, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was uh, it worked out. It worked out for everybody. And now they're our furry little uh, friends, and they don't. We don't really own them, they own us. That's just how it is. So, that's a little lesson for you today. <laughs> um, so I have a, a few other songs. I have some new stuff I want to try for you guys. So. It's a stool. Don't pay any attention to that. It's OK. <laughs> All right, so. Uh, I want to try this one on you guys. Um, <laughs> did you ever hear the song Despacito by uh, Daddy Yankee? Do you know what the fuck he's saying? No one knows, right? You don't know. Like, I mean, I'm the worst Puerto Rican ever because I don't even know. And uh, I like to sing along anyway. So I kind of write my own version of it. So this is what I think it means. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here it goes. Going over to the drive through. I know it's not healthy, but screw you, yeah. Tacos in my mouth is like heaven, yeah. Oh, oh, oh I am on a 
a diet, but it's my cheat day. Fucking starve and get out of my way. <laughs> Make me want to savor every bite slowly. <laughs> Got me thinking outside of the bun. Five dollar bucks, now we're having fun. The way you say live must the only words I want to hear. Gonna eat it slow so it can last long. Do, do you want anything from Taco Bell? You better tell me now or you can go to hell. I really hope they still have the queso rito. Hell yeah, fuck. It was only for a limited time. Ending that promotion was such a crime. <laughs> I guess I'll settle for a potato rito. And Doritos. Nobody believes that I am Puerto Rican. My parents didn't teach me Spanish. I bendito. I don't know enough to say that I'm bilingual. Un pequito. Quiero Taco Bell. I want my damn burrito. <laughs> they don't even have any rolled chicken tacos. What am I supposed to feed to my quetitos? Those pendejos. <laughs> Hey, I'm glad you guys like that. <laughs> I think Mike Keegan really liked that song. <laughs> Show of hands, who wants Taco Bell now? Everyone wants it now, right? <laughs> but eat the pizza because it was provided for free by our generous host. Okay. <laughs> uh, here's another new one I want to try. I have a couple songs about my husband. This one he doesn't hate that much, but uh, <laughs> this is the lesser of two evils. I'm gonna do them both, but uh, we're gonna do this one first. So uh, he had a beard for a really long time, and it was starting to gross me out after a while because it's like, yeah, because it's just like you know, and he has no hair either. He's a he's a bald guy, and like so he grew the beard because he just wanted to have some kind of hair, and I I respect that and I understand it but it was just like dirty and it smelled bad. So, <laughs> so I wrote a song about it and uh, <laughs> here it is. All right. Babe, your face looks like a beaver. A cold, wet, spotted type of creature. I threw my hands in the air and said, lose that damn thing. He said, can I keep it just a little longer? Round and around and around and around we go. Movember is over, how long will you let it grow? <laughs> Not really sure how to feel about it. Something's in it, is that food? <laughs> Makes me feel sick when I try to kiss you. Please make it go away. I want you to shave. <laughs> Ooh, you have until beard con. Ooh, then I want that shit gone. At first it was kind of fun, but now you look like some old timey painting. Baby, I don't want to fight, but you should know I'll be retaliating. You know what that means, right? I'm not going to shave my beard either. <laughs> not really sure how to feel about it. Now your face just looks so nude. Makes me feel like I can't live without it. So please don't shave all the way. I guess it can stay. <laughs> oh, thanks guys all right so uh this one was this next one is the first parody i've ever written um and i haven't actually played with it in a while so all right i think i got it <laughs> so um it's a little weird it's a little out there and uh i think i wrote it because 
Like, I'm not a stalker, but I know a lot of women who are stalkers. I have a lot of friends who stalk people. And <laughs> it's just basically to let people know that women can be creeps, too. So <laughs> here it is. Here we go. Uh, if, you're, if you're into 70s music, you'll, uh, you'll recognize the tune. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Drove my car creepily past your window last night. I masturbated at your door till daylight. It almost seems like you're avoiding me. I think so because I watch you from your tree. Well, I got a brand new restraining order. You got a brand new key. I think we should get back together and you should marry me. I know I slashed all your tires and I am really sorry. Well, I got a brand new restraining order. You got a brand new key. <laughs> oh, there's more, there's more. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Verse two. <laughs> You changed your number and you bought a new car. But I hacked your iPhone so I know where you are. Now I can't find you anywhere around the world. I even know if you're with a new girl, oh yeah. No means yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I asked your mother if you were at home. She said yes, but you weren't alone. She called the police to come arrest me. But I got a good lawyer who set me free. Well, I got a brand new parole officer. You got a brand new key. I think we should get back together and have a few babies. La 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 la. Well, I got a brand new bottle of chloroform. You can't get rid of me. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I know how to make it. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> All right, uh, I got one more song for you guys before I get out of here. This, this is the song that my husband hates um, because <laughs> it's, uh, well, let me, well, here's the background. So um, we, we've been married for two years, and, um, but we've been together almost 10 years. It's been a long time, and uh, he still keeps secrets from me. You know, I thought after we got married and we took that vow, we were going to share everything. Like, well, there shouldn't be any secrets. Maybe I'm just a crazy Puerto Rican, but that's how I feel. So this song is about uh, a secret that my husband has been keeping from me. So here it is. Uh, okay. <laughs> Woke up this morning, jumped out of bed in my birthday suit. Made you some breakfast, gave you some head. No, I didn't. <laughs> it rhymed. <laughs> and made love to you. Looked in your eyes with heart in my hand to ask you a question. Cause I know that you're an old-fashioned man Yeah Can I see your butthole just for once in my life? Say yes, say yes, cause I need to know You say I'll never get to see it even though I'm your wife Tough luck, you bitch, but the answer is no Why you gotta be so prude? It's not like I'm another dude And you can see my butthole too I'm gonna look at it anyway while you're asleep. Look at it anyway. I'll take a peek. Yeah, no matter what you say. And I'll spread those cheeks and look at it anyway. <laughs> Why you gotta kill the moon? <laughs> I think I killed someone. <laughs> oh my God. Thank you guys so much. My name is Jessica Blazo. Thank you for listening to all of my songs. And thank you, Rob, for having me.
what, you know what I want to do? Uh, with Mike Keegan. Yes, we got everybody out here. Um, we got a couple of minutes. We're a couple minutes short. Am I right, Bobby? All right. Does anybody have any questions for anybody on the stage here? Really, anything, anything that comes to mind. It's about their acting. Yes. When's your next shows? When's your next shows? Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Friday night, I'll be at, uh, where am I Friday night? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Friday night, I'm at Piccolo Boussola in Mineola. Saturday, I'm in Baltimore. And where are you? Uh, Friday, I'm at uh, Gateway Comedy Club in Patchogue. Nice. <laughs> I'll be home jerking off. <laughs> Nothing on the books. Nothing on the books. <laughs> Nothing on the books. And, and Jess? Um, I have a terrible memory, but you can go to my Instagram at Jess Effing C, J E S S E F F I N G C. And, um, or just go to Jessica Colazzo Comedy on Facebook and you'll see my, my dates on there. Did you like her songs? I love her songs, man. I love her songs. June 16th with Teresa at Coasters in East Meadow. Okay, I'm glad you clarified that. June 16th, I'll be with Teresa. Doing a show. All right. Anything you guys have before? Anything you want to ask the comedians on stage here about their life, about what they do? How much drugs do they do a day? <laughs> Nothing at all. How many STDs? Nothing. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> you name it. You name it. <laughs> He's gone to county fairs, so fucking. <laughs> Do the math. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming out again. We enjoyed being here with you. Strong Island Comedy Showcase. Share it, share it, share it, guys. Get the word out there. Good night, guys. <laughs>